on the first release at the end of June, we've got a totally new Grass Valley program, which is the Grass Valley browser. So let's get Edius out of the way and I'm going to open up the browser. And this is a totally separate program. It only works on a program that's got Edius installed, so you can't run it on its own. You have to have Edius installed and licensed. But then you can use this to look through your computer and find clips and organize them. So in this case, I've already added quite a few clips into here. You can see I've got about 3,000 clips that have actually been added into it. Now, there are other browsing programs out there. Well, what most browsing programs don't do is they don't show you certain video formats properly. Typically, broadcast formats or card-based formats like XDCAM, DVC Pro P2 stuff, AVC HD even. Some of them will show you that, but if you've got a span clip, it won't stitch it all together into one big clip. And that's what the Grass Valley browser is really good at. It deals with tons and tons of proper video formats. In my folder of demonstration footage, I've got some HDV footage. I've got some P2 footage and the train stuff is all AVCHD. The really nice thing about the browser is all you do is you go to wherever that folder is on your computer, which in my case is this demo footage folder. And for example, I just point it at the trains folder and it shows me all the clips. First thing is just looking at clips. I can browse around the computer and find a bunch of different clips. The next thing is I can bring them in and organize them. So for example, let's go to a folder I haven't done this 3D footage folder. It's full of a whole bunch of subfolders. There's lots of other stuff in it. I'm going to right click, say register to the library. Now I can just bring it in and it just becomes one of the clips in the library. Or I can register it as a favorite or I can create a catalog. I think I'm going to create a catalog with this one. And I'm going to create a catalog of that and all the subfolders. Obviously you could just do this one folder or all the subfolders. But normally you're going to sort of point it at a directory and say bring in everything under this directory. It then starts to register the files. I think there you can see I've got 116 files, nips through them fairly quickly. And then once that's done, I've now got a folder called 3D footage. As you can see, I can see all of the footage that's actually in that folder. When it comes to where they are on the computer, I've got a folder with a subfolder and another subfolder, blah, blah, as you would normally with card based footage. This just shows you the footage as a bunch of icons. You can change the size of the icon so they can get bigger and smaller. You can click on it and play it. I've got a typical EDIUS display, which is showing me the time code of the clip. So where I am in the particular clip and the time code of it. I've got all the audio channels displayed here and I can play it quite happily. So it's just a very simple way of browsing footage, but it goes further than that. For example, I've got the preview window here because I'm working on one screen. So I've got all the folders over this side, the icons in the middle, the preview window here and then a bunch of information over here. If you're running two screens, you can make this preview window come up on the other screen full screen. So you could spread the catalog out and then automatically have full screen playback of this on your second computer screen. You can turn things on and off just using these little buttons up here. So obviously that's turning off lists, that's turning off my preview, that's turning off the information. You can also tag clips. There's a whole bunch of clips there of the Eiffel Tower. I'd like to actually set up a little catalog with just those in it. All I do is select the lot, right click and say edit properties, and then I can add in a tag. So now each of those has got a little tag which says Eiffel Tower on it. If you look at the clip information over here, this shows you information about the specific clip that I've got. You can see in tags there, I've got Eiffel Tower. I could have added another tag in there. I could put comments in here. This little bar over here only does your information per clip so you have to do it one at a time whereas if you select a bunch of clips and go edit properties you can add the same properties to them all at once having tagged that i can actually do what's called making up a smart catalog so you can see over here in the library window i've got my all clips which shows me every single clip that i've actually registered to the library i've now got the catalogs that i've created so here's the 3d one we just made up with all that stuff inside of it I've got other catalogs, which I created earlier. This is all the footage in my demo directory. This is my XD cam stuff. This is some AVC HD footage. Down here, I've got the train AVC HD footage. This is some P2. Again, all just popping up nicely in the library. Here's some HDV. And it made up a catalog because I imported it in exactly the same way I did a second go. Basically right clicked on it, said register to the library as a catalog. It made a catalog for that folder but that's where all these catalogs came from. I've got smart catalogs. So I've already made up a couple of those and I'm going to make up another one now just to show me the Eiffel Tower footage. 
So I'm just going to click on this little button. From the drop down list, I'm just going to say, oh, just uh, you see all the different types of things that you can make catalogues from. I'm going to say do it by a tag. Because I added that Eiffel Tower, Eiffel is probably spelt wrongly there, but Eiffel Tower tag. And if I just do that, it creates me a catalog that has all the things that have got Eiffel Tower in the tag, which are those clips that I've just done. I'll call it something that makes sense. So that, there we are. I've now got a new smart catalog with just those five clips in it. Let's go back to the footage, find some more clips, edit properties, give it exactly the same tab. Now I've got to make sure I spell it exactly the same. As soon as I start typing in E, it comes up with all the tags with E in them. And there we are. I can choose that Eiffel Tower one. And then you come back to the Eiffel Tower smart catalog and it's added all those clips in. Eddie says he's quite new, so we haven't had it very long, so we haven't found the limitations of this, but as you can see, I've got a catalog here with 3,000 clips in. I've done a catalog with about six or 7,000 clips in. It just seems to catalog footage and do that really, really well. You can imagine if you loaded up 7,000 clips into your editing program, normally that has an effect. It slows everything down. It's a bit harder to work with. That's the whole point of cataloging something in a different program. You can do it on all sorts of things. So you can have multiple tags. So I'm now choosing anything that's got Eiffel Tower and Arc de Triomphe as two different tags, or I can choose other things as well. Let's add in a category and say, well, anything done with a particular camera model. Now, none of my clips have got camera model. Let's go back to the 3D things, select them again, edit the properties, add in camera model GH4. Now, if I go back to the smart catalog, edit it, and say, yeah, anything that's got GH4 on it, it means anything that matches those two and has this on it. So you get the idea. Lots of ways of organizing things and smart catalogs that if you change information, it automatically updates the catalog. If you add in clips, it'll automatically update the catalog. And it just sits there happily doing it. Other nice things about the browser, let's go to this mode where I can see all of my clips. You can see here I've got a bunch of video clips, obviously with the pictures. I've got some sound clips. If you move down a bit, I've got some still images. You can trim down the list so you can just see the video clips or just see the still images or just see the audio clips. You can also put it into various modes. So if I click on this little icon, I'm in a thumbnail mode at the moment, which just shows me thumbnails, obviously. Go into details mode, it brings up lots of different details and you can kind of decide on how you want to sort it just by clicking on these, just like you would in the Edius bin. You also have things like the timeline mode and the calendar mode. So in calendar mode, it shows you a calendar. Now, this is very similar to programs I've had from Sony and Panasonic that actually come with the cameras. So the advantage of this compared to those programs is this deals with loads of different types of footage, not just Sony footage or Panasonic footage. So the calendar here is showing me obviously a calendar and all the dates when things were particularly filmed. And then let's go back to 2014. That's where I get to my Paris footage where I was filming at the Eiffel Tower. Having chosen a date, it takes me into the timeline view, which I could have just chosen straight off, where it just organizes clips by the date they were taken. So you see, as you're moving up and down the list, it tells you where you are and you should be able to find the clips more easily that way. One thing you may be asking is, okay, all this extra tagging and information that I'm putting in there, where is that being stored? It isn't written on the clip. It's actually stored in its own little database. So if you moved all these clips to another computer, that information wouldn't go with it. Adobe have the opposite idea. They actually tag all the clips, or if they can't tag the clips, they'll stick a file next to it with all this information in it so that when you move the clips around, the information goes with it, which is okay apart from the fact that with Adobe, it just means that it's actually writing stuff to the files and fiddling around with the files a lot, which means sometimes it takes a lot longer to do stuff in the background. It has to reconform them if you move from one machine to the other, which takes time and slows the whole machine down. So the easiest way of doing it, a lot less faffing around, but it won't move if you move the clips from one machine to another. Playback of these clips is actually very good. So for example, here's some GH4 footage. It's 4K footage playing back in a window and it's playing really nice and smoothly. Actually, this might not come out too well on the screen recording, but it actually does play them back very well. We've been very impressed with how it just simply plays back footage and it plays it back really well. OK, so that's going around the Grass Valley browser. How does that relate to Edius? How can I then use that to get footage into Edius? Well, Edius has been running all this time, so I'm just going to come back into Edius and I'm going to go to the source browser. And you can see there's a new heading in the source browser, GV browser. 
So you've got all the regular headings for different types of footage, XD cam, removable media, this is where your AVC HD turns up, your DVD writer, so if you've got a DVD writer it'll rip video off DVDs, rip audio off CDs to reuse it. Well we've got this new thing, GV Browser, and if you open that up you can see that you've actually got your different catalogues and smart catalogues in there. Now this was open whilst I was busy fiddling around in the browser, so it's not automatically updated, so all I've got to do is just right click and refresh, or F5, which is the standard keyboard shortcut for refreshing Windows folders, so exactly the same as Windows. And as soon as I've refreshed it, you can see I've got my Eiffel Tower clips in there, I can then take them and use them. I can take them, right click on them, add them to the bin, copy them into the bin, all that sort of thing. But it's basically a way of cataloging your clips and then you can go into EDIUS and then just whip them out of the browser and put them straight onto the timeline and use them. And of course you've got the same different modes of displaying icons in the bin with a nice scaly thing that you do inside of the project window.